The new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Indigo Disc DLC has released and it brought with it some brand new Pokemon. These include the likes of 4 new Paradox Forms, 2 new Dragon Types, and the 3rd legendary Pokemon Terrapagos. All of these Pokemon have brand new signature moves including Mighty Cleave, which is a 100% accurate rock move that hits through Protect, and Burning Bulwark, a protecting move that will burn any Pokemon who uses a contact move into it. All of these Pokemon can expect to have some kind of niche, but just how will they affect the competitive metagame? Today let's discuss how strong we can expect these Pokemon to be. I wish I could have gotten this video out to you guys sooner, but this weekend I was actually traveling to San Antonio Regionals to compete, and with so many tournaments happening year round, I find myself traveling all the time and having to write videos like this one from my hotel room or a local coffee shop. You never know just how insecure your data is on these public networks until something goes wrong. Luckily, today's sponsor has my back. Surfshark VPN is a service that allows for me to use a virtual private network to keep my data secure no matter where I'm working from. A VPN encrypts your data to keep your personal information secret and out of the hands of hackers. But I don't just use them for privacy, there's actually some pretty cool use cases beyond that. VPNs can change your device's location to allow you unrestricted access to the internet no matter where you are. For example, if I wanted to stream something on Netflix but it's unavailable in my region, I can just swap regions with Surfshark and watch it as though I was in a region where it's available to stream. The holidays are here, so why not give yourself the gift of secure web browsing? Surfshark is offering viewers of my channel an exclusive holiday deal. Click the link in the description to try Surfshark for free for 30 days. And when you use my promo code MOXIEBOOSTED, you can get up to an additional 6 months for free. So what are you waiting for? Click that link in the description and secure your data today. Alright, so it is time for me to give my thoughts on all these new Pokemon. Uh, apologies if I sound a little bit different. You know, I just woke up and I'm a little tired, you know, my voice is a little off. Uh, but yeah, so in the DLC, the uh, Indigo Disc DLC, there aren't that many new Pokemon. But I will say, as a VGC player, this, like, a, these additional 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six, and you know, seventh, uh, Terrapagos isn't going to be legal for a little bit. Uh, those six Pokemon are actually going to change the format enough where I'm, I'm happy. I mean, Regulation E effectively only added Ogre Pond and Okie Dokie to the game. Uh, and also, it's Okie Dokie. Okie Dogie. I feel like I just said the straight up, you know, actual word for a minute there. Uh, it added them and Personal Blood Moon and send a shot to the game, but none of them were so strong as to not dethrone the current number one archetype, which is uh, basically just like hyper offense with Tornadus Urshifu. These guys, I won't say they'll dethrone it, but it gives me hope for like the format being different enough. Anyways, I'll talk about my thoughts in each one of these Pokemon, how strong I think they're going to be. Uh, and of course, these guys will all get full moveset guides in the future. I've already done our challenge on uh, my next moves again will probably be a uh, raging bolt and then we'll like do hydrapple in a couple of days but uh yeah so let's begin with hydrapple this is the diplin evolution now a while back uh we had some people in the community realize that diplin could hold the eviolite meaning it got a 50 percent defense boost but that didn't mean it was good it was still like super super bad um it had super sweet syrup which would lower the opponent's evasiveness once per battle which is really lame uh, and it had this move called Super Sweet Syrup, or not Super Sweet Syrup, uh, it was called, oh my god, I can't even remember what it was called. It was that move that lowers your speed every single turn by like two stages. I don't know, it wasn't very good, it was pretty niche, uh, but yeah, I remember now, it was called Syrup Bomb. Or, yeah, Syrup Bomb. So yeah, it would lower the target speed by one stage every turn, it was it was you know, it was a very niche Pokemon. It wasn't very good. Uh, Leonard Craft did some, you know, digging. He found out, yes, this thing is probably going to evolve, and we were right. So, this is the evolution we were waiting for. If we could just compare the stats, let me go ahead and just throw Diplin here, actually, to put them side by side. We compare the stats, um, you know, from 80 HP to 106, from 110 defense, it stays the same. 95 speed attack goes up to 120. Uh, and it gets a little bit faster. Honestly, it's just a straight up stat buff uh, in all the places it needed it. I would have liked to see a little bit more uh, defense rather than just HP, uh, but we'll take what we can get. 
basically this guy just is much more offensively capable of like doing stuff uh, diplin's draco meteor bounced off of things it almost felt like you were using a mixed attacker draco meteor like it felt as, about as strong as like a garchomp draco uh when it's a, it's supposed to be a special attacker so like this was just super disappointing however this guy he's got some sauce he's got some sauce not only does it have super sweet syrup that very interesting signature move but it also has access to regenerator which is honestly just so good uh we have a ton of really good regenerator pokemon uh you know like amoongus and uh like amoongus um and also amoongus but hydrapple <laughs> being able to have regenerator rather than this other ability is actually really nice it means that there are a couple of sets that they can run like i said i would have liked to have seen like an assault vest set or i, I would have liked to see some more special defense on it how uh, however, you know, an Assault Vest set will cover for that, and that will allow you to be, like, pretty bulky and recover off every time uh, you switch out. Uh, you'll you'll be able to, like, recover 30% of your health. Uh, and it does allow you to just be an all-out attacker in that sense. So, like, a very basic move set if you guys just want to get, like, simple with it. You can be, like, a super slow special attacker. Um, it doesn't matter that you're not slower than Amoongus because you are a natural grass type, so... Uh, you're not going to worry about Spore or Rage Powder. That will allow you to be able to fire off like Draco Meteors. It will allow you to fire off uh, Leaf Storm, which is pretty strong. Um, but it has this also like pretty interesting move, Fickle Beam. So, how do I explain this? Dragon Pulse, I believe, is a very bad move. It doesn't hit as hard as you want it to. It's only 85, uh, and it just feels like it bounces off of things. So you typically only run Dragon Pulse on like Assault Vest Pokemon with other options. Okay, good. This does get Earth Power. So like Draco Meteor, Leaf Storm, Earth Power, Dragon Pulse would be like a moveset I would suggest for this thing because you don't want to always be firing off Dracos and deal like, you know, a ton of damage and then have to switch out and stuff. But Pickle Beam allows you that middle ground option. This move is a little bit weaker than Dragon Pulse. However, one in three Pickle Beams... A little under one in three it's 30 percent has its power doubled all like the heads come out and just straight up fire i'll put some i'll put something on screen right now for you guys they they just come out and they like fire it's so cool uh which means it's a 160 base power move meaning it is stronger than draco meteor by a whole 30 points i mean it's a nuke it's a nuke with an assault vest you'll be able to see in the field and be able to click it as far as like terra types go it is a uh, grass and dragon type it's weak to ice uh, which means that probably like steel you'll be able to get rid of that uh, you'll be able to get rid of the uh, fairy weakness as well as the ice weakness uh, you're not weak to fire because you're a grass dragon so uh, it's not likely they'll be firing a you know a fire move into you anyways so that is pretty interesting I don't know as far as like partners for it it definitely feels like it would have to go on hard trick room I don't see it working in many other situations you could do soft trick room i guess if you really wanted to try it out like you know incineroar porygon 2 uh hydrapple and then you can do like torn urshifu flutter as like your last three and that would be a pretty solid team so yeah uh those are my thoughts on hydrable uh next up we have iron boulder now iron boulder is ridiculous bro this pokemon can get kind of stupid with it and it's mostly its signature move mighty cleave it's 95 base power, and it bypasses protection without breaking it. I would have preferred for it to break protection so you could double into things. However, it's a 100 accurate rock move with 95 base power. That is, dude, rock moves, I feel like I talk about this like every video. Rock moves are just inaccurate across the board, and it's really annoying. Um, having one that is literally the safest option in the game. This is literally the safest move in the game, actually. I can't think of a safer move. Hits through protect. 95 base power rock type that hits so many things are super effective it's just i don't know i'm really excited to click this guy um it's a rock psychic type though this pokemon it has some pretty phenomenal stats 120 attack 124 speed beyond that um it's decently bulky but i would still i would still like call this a little bit of a glass cannon almost exclusively because of its typing you know 90 80 108 is actually really good bulk um, however, you know, you're going to be sucker punch weak, you're going to be weak to bug, water, uh, you take neutral from fighting, you're weak to steel, not the best, but offensively rock psychic is really, really good. Uh, as far as like a physical psychic move, you do have, um, like two options, psycho cut or zen headbutt. 
I think you would pretty much want to go Zen Headbutt every time. You could go Psycho Cut if you're like scared of missing, but the 20% chance to flinch is worth the trade off, especially with the extra power. Uh, and this guy's just going to want to like take KOs like every, every turn. It also has the option to do uh, booster energy speed, which is pretty nice. Uh, with that, you know, you hit a pretty decent speed tier uh, with a Jolly Nature here. You'll speed boost. Actually, with an Adamant Nature, you'll speed boost too, wouldn't you? You would have to like... Here. I'm hold on, I'm trying to check something. Like, um, I'm trying to see if like what's what gets you like the better attack stat. So if you go Adamant, you can hit 174 and then 176. If you go Jolly, you can go 172, 193. Okay, yeah. So if you want to hit just like a little bit harder, you go Adamant, but still make sure your speed's higher. Uh, but if you want to like just have as much speed as possible, Jolly's pretty good. Uh, but that's not a bad speed tier. Uh, Mighty Cleave is, I'm pretty sure, going to be a one shot on most Fluttermane. Uh, and they can't protect versus it because of this, you know, secondary effect just you, you know no protection at all um but yeah beyond these two moves it's really nice that it still has close combat that is obviously a very nice move for a uh, glass cannon to have uh especially one that's like a rock psychic type you do get walled out by steel types so having that option is very good does it get swords dance i would like to believe it still gets swords dance yeah it does um and if that's the case you would probably actually drop your psychic coverage in my opinion and just go for protect because i feel like even though it's a psychic type, right? Uh, psychic as like an offensive type, it, it doesn't hit much more than like rock would, uh, especially since you're both getting walled out by like steel and you have like close combat to dark types anyways. Yeah, no. So yeah, booster energy speed, protect swords dance, mighty cleave. That feels really, really threatening. Or if you want to go even crazier with it, you could go booster attack. And that's like also just as threatening. It's actually probably a little bit more threatening. It kind of plays like how Roaring Moon would. You would boost your attack and then threaten a one shot on something. Uh, and that also offsets the uh, possibility that you might get intimidated. So really interesting Pokemon. I want to try it out very soon. Iron Crown. By the way, I, I just want to put this out there. Gouging Fire is my favorite Pokemon of the DLC. It, it, I, I'm going to get into that guy in a minute. I have so many ideas for him. But Iron Crown. I feel like this guy's my least favorite of the DLC. <laughs> he feels like he does one thing, but he's going to do it really, really good. So it is another Pokemon that is a fast psychic type. But this guy, this guy has expanding force and the ability to run booster energy speed. I am not ready to play fast Psy Spam. I've been playing Trick Room Psy Spam all generation. I do not want to play fast Psy Spam. The only good news is they can't run max special attack. They have to run, you know, 164, 165 to make sure they're speed boosting. But you'd run like Expanding Forest, you'd run Tachyon Cutter, that new move that hits twice. Uh, Steel type, doesn't check accuracy, pretty cool. It means you bypass like Focus Ashes and stuff and Sturdy. Uh, protect, and for like your final move, there are a couple of options. Focus Blast isn't terrible. Um, you'd probably like run either Psychic, Psychic Noise, whatever. Um, if you want like a single target move, but I don't think that's like super necessary. It also gets Volt Switch, which is pretty cool, but yeah, you're, you're probably going to want to stand most of the time because you want to make sure you don't lose your booster energy. Uh, but yeah, that final move, it's it's kind of up in the air. I like Terra Blast personally from my testing. It lets you run Terra Grass. Um, that's pretty decent into just like, you know, if you have to play under Trick Room or if you're like scared of Amoongus Rage Powder, protecting like a Flutterman, you can go Terra Grass and then Tachyon Cutter, that thing. Um, but you can also just click Expanding Force if, <laughs> if Psychic Train's in the field. So that is also really nice. Uh, really interesting Pokemon. I'm not a fan of how it's gonna play, but I'm sure it's gonna be good. Next up, uh, we have Gouging Fire. Gouging Fire is my favorite Pokemon of the DLC because it has so much sauce, dude. It has so much sauce. Fire Dragon type, one of the best typings offensively. And also like defensively, you're only weak to what? Ground, and that's like it? Hold on. Ground and Rock, and I'm pretty sure that's it. And dragon <laughs> sorry ground rock dragon those are the three yes those are pretty common offensive typings but um you know only having those as weaknesses is pretty decent so also with this bulk in this speed it's got like it's built almost like a landers dude 91 speed really good bulk decent attack though uh rather than landers is like absurdly high attack but this guy my the set that i'm excited for and i keep telling everyone about because i can't keep my mouth shut for the tech that i have Jolly Nature, you hit 
144 speed. Now you're out speeding. Scarf Adamant Landers, right? Adamant Scarf Landers hits 143. You're hitting 144. You know, that guy's in shambles right now. Max out that HP. Make sure you get as much bulk as possible, but not too much. You only want to hit 143 on your defense and 143 on your attack. And then max out that spit F. Or not max out, but use the rest of it on your spit F. What does this set do? Well, you speed boost. 144, like I said, you're outspeeding Scarf Lando, which outspeeds basically every other non Scarf Pokemon. And from there, you run Burning Bulwark, the new signature move of this guy. It is King Shield. It only protects from damaging attacks, but if they make contact, they get burned. And then you run Howl, Breaking Swipe, in the new move, Temper Flare. So why do you run the set, right? I also am a big proponent of Terra Poison at the moment. Go Terra Water, though. Why do you run the set? This is a support Pokemon that deals a lot of damage as well. It's a very, it's a very high attack stat for what it's uh, for what I want it to do. Um, and what you're gonna do <laughs> is turn one. You lead off with a physical attacker. It can be your Urshifu, your King Gambit, your Rillaboom, whatever. You go for that Howl. You boost you and your allies' attack stat by one. Now, I know what you're saying. What if they fake out? They're never going to fake out. You get this Pokemon. This Pokemon, dude. If you fake it out, you get punished harder than if you didn't. If you go for the fake out, they can go for Burning Bulwark. You get burned. Rillaboom, useless. Iron Hands, useless. Incineroar, probably still good. He's like the only guy who can fake this guy out, and it wouldn't be that big of an issue. But the issue is, if it does get that fake out off, if Incineroar does fake out this guy, you have absolutely ruined your partner Pokemon because Temper Flare doubles if the user's last move failed. It works exactly like Stomping Tantrum. If you don't know, Stomping Tantrum will double on power in a couple of conditions. One of which is if you get flinched. So if you decide to stop this guy from going for its Howl or its Breaking Swipe and you flinch it, just know that the next turn something's going to get hit by a 150 base power fire move coming off a 115 base attack. That is pretty good. And if that howl went off, if a previous howl went off, it's it's just Jover. It's just Jover. That's that's choice ban that's choice ban damage. Yeah, it's like intimidate food, right? But that's why I think it's going to work real well with King Gambit. You know, you you go for your howl, you get both your guys attack stats up. Real scary Pokémon. Real scary Pokémon. I'm real excited to use it. I don't know. Beyond that though, there are a couple of other sets you can run. You can do boost your attack honestly if you really wanted to make it like a, a real bulky guy let's see you run that i mean yeah you could just do like max hp whatever <laughs> max hp max attack like four spit f and it'd be a pretty good pokemon but at that point you would run like burning bulwark um flare blitz like a decent option what else does it get I feel like I, I'm like I've, I've underexplored this Pokemon because I was so excited about that one particular set. It gets a bunch of other really cool moves. I mean, it gets Stomping Tantrum itself. It gets uh, Raging Fury. I don't think you want to click that. It does get Psychic Things, which is pretty interesting. Uh, Outrage, Dragon Claw, Earthquake. Um, let's get High Horsepower. I prefer that. But yeah, no. This guy, he's got some sauce. I only my only thing for this thing that like I really wish it got uh, was. Will-O-Wisp, which it didn't get, but Burning Bulwark is just as cool. But yeah. Other than that, it's also a pretty decent Assault Vest Pokemon. You can do Snarl, Lair Blitz, a um, couple of coverage moves. Probably want to do Stomping Tantrum, actually. Make sure you're not walled up by, like, Rock Mons. And then, like, Dragon Claw. Yeah. I mean, but also, in singles, uh, this is, like, a little bit separate. You can do D-Dance as well. Oh, actually, that's a really scary option. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, this thing next to King Gambit. This thing next to King Gambit, right? Burning Bulwark. Dragon Dance. Hold on. <laughs> you also need your Dragon Coverage. I guess you could just do Stomping Tantrum as well. You would probably want Dragon Claw, right? So this set. You boost your attack. With your... Uh, not the Assault Bus, sorry. Boost your energy. Uh, you boost your attack. It like Literally, it plays like Roaring Moon, right? It's the other Roaring Moon option where you do booster attack and then you like Dragon Dance and then you just like KO things. Um, that's also pretty scary. You hit 143 speed, literally Lando speed. It means that, you know, at, at one Dragon Dance, you're outspeeding everything in the metagame. 
still works well with like King Gambit, other Defiant Mons. You could even make a case for Ogre Pond if you really want to. I don't know. It's a cool dude. Next is Raging Bolt. I feel like I stayed on Gouging Fire way too long, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Next is Raging Bolt. This guy is going to be ridiculous. I was playing against Michael last night, my, my artist for the channel. Dude was running Booster Energy. Dude was running Booster Energy Calm Mind, and I, it blew my mind how strong this guy is. You hit 236 to hit that bump, right? Or wherever the bump is on this guy. Hold on. Might be 196. It's 180, actually. You hit 180, right? Max out that HP. Give it just a little bit of speed. You want to outspeed the other, you know, Raging Bolts. A little bit of spadef, a little bit of defense. And you run. Protect. Calm Mind. Thunderclap. Dragon Pulse. I know I said that Dragon Pulse was not a strong move. But this thing. Oh my god. It hit way too hard. Boost your energy. <laughs> Gives you that 30% boost to your special attack stat. Uh, on switching. You know, you don't have uh, an Intimidate that can deal with it. Calm Mind makes you like insanely bulky with this guy. You run it next to a Moongus, next to a uh, Rillaboom, you're always going to get that Calm Mind off. You're always going to be able to click Dragon Pulse or Thunderclap. And it's just like an absurdly strong move, dude. It is crazy strong. Yes, Thunderclap only works if the Pokemon's attacking. But think about all the Pokemon that are relevant in the metagame that this guy can just absolutely annihilate. Let's take a look, right? Let's take a look. Raging Bolt. Blank set. 180 Spatak. We were running booster energy on it. Modest nature. We'll turn on that. Urshifu Rapid Strike. They cannot attack you. They can only go for Aqua Jet, which is going to bounce off of you. Their Aqua Jet does 22% maximum, and that's Adamant Mystic Water. Your Thunderclap, instant one shot on them. Versus Tornadus, instant one shot. Chien Pao does not even want to get hit by this. Yes, it has to Sucker Punch into you, it cannot Icicle Crash. Because if it does, Thunderclap's going to do 59 to 69%. And like I said, we're running Calm Mind. If you go plus one, there's a chance you just one-shot Champau. This Pokemon's crazy, dude. This Pokemon is like actually going to be like meta-defining. And I'm, I'm more excited to play against Raging Bolt <laughs> than I am against anything in this game. I, I love the way Raging Bolt plays. Um, I'm more excited to use Gadging Fire, though. But yeah, and also the final Pokemon. I can't forget about our child on. We already did a full moveset guide on that guy if you guys want to check it out. However, just a quick rundown on how Archaldon functions. It is a, it's an evolution of Duraldon. So Duraldon, you know, it gets Eevee Light now. I wouldn't run it personally. But Archaldon, typically, the way that you're going to want to run this guy, like max HP, hit the bump on the special attack stat wherever it may be. I think this guy is at... 196, yeah. Get like a little bit of speed on it. Spadef, defense. You need to assault vest this guy. You can also go life orb if you really want to. Uh, however, however, if you uh, go life orb, you're gonna really wish you were assault vest because your spadef's like way too low. It's very hard to live hit with this guy otherwise. You'll run its new move, Electro Shot. 130 base power. This move is crazy. If rain is active, there's a Pelipper on the field. If you click Rain Dance with your Tornadus, Politoed hits the field, whatever. Charges in one turn. So immediately you get plus one special attack. Then you fire off a 130 base power Electro type move. From now on, your Flash Cannon's a nuke. Your Draco Meteor is a nuke. And because you're running Stamina, because every single attack raises your defense stat, your final move, instead of like Snarl, which you would run under out on, you put Body Press. And that's a secondary win con. If that Incineroar wants to fake you out, it gets punished. Next turn, it's going to get outsped. It's going to get body pressed. This Pokemon's insane. It's actually like so good. But yeah, that full moveset guide's already out. I also did a showcase of it with Brady Smith, aka VGC Corner. Make sure you look at that. Finally, we'll take a look at Terrapagos. Terrapagos has three forms. Pull them all up right now. Uh, Terrapagos, Terrapagos Terrastal, and Terrapagos Stellar. So, regular Terrapagos, unusable in battle. I don't know why they even made this a thing. <laughs> I don't know why they gave it stats, but it hits the field and then its ability activates. Its ability is Terra Shift. It turns into its Terrastal form immediately. Terra Shell is this guy's ability. And it's basically just multi-scale. Um, yeah, it's basically just multi-scale. It's a normal type Pokemon. Pure normal is really interesting for uh, 
legendary. I was kind of waiting for it. I, I predicted this actually. I said it was either going to be water, rock, or just pure normal. Got one of them right. Uh, but yeah, Terra Shell, you momentarily. <laughs> They might as well have just made it multi-scale, I'll be honest, but I think this is technically better than multi-scale. You momentarily turn into a type that resists the move, meaning that, you know, you take half damage, um, and then you switch back. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking doing that, but uh, it doesn't have, like, the greatest stats. It's basically only going to be good when you go for the Terra on it, but let's say you don't want a Terra. The stats are still pretty decent. I think that personally, I would do like choice specs or assault vest on it. It has this new move, Terra Star Storm. It is 120 base power, and if you're if you're a uh, stellar Terra, it'll hit both the foes. I believe that. Hold on. Okay, hold on. I believe that if you are you know stellar Terra. It will also turn into the Stellar Terra because I don't see why not. Let me double check that. Yes, I've confirmed that what I believed was correct. If you are Ster if you are Stellar Terra, uh, it, this will turn into the Stellar Terra type, meaning that it is unresisted. That's the crazy part of this move. It is unresisted and it will hit both foes. So that's why I think the Choice Specs item is like absolutely nutty on this guy. Um, but beyond that, you know, in its regular base form, still a pretty decent move. Has access to a ton of coverage. Flamethrower, Earth Power, uh, Ice Beam. It has basically every move you would want on an offensive Pokemon. But I just don't think that uh, it's worth running unless you're going to commit the Terra to it. Because once you Terra, once you Terra, this guy gets crazy. Your HP goes from 95 to 160. Your defenses stay the same, your speed stays the same, but you get a massive special attack boost to 130. That's when you actually hit, like, you know, Crazy numbers and damage. So, Terra Star Storm, Ice Beam. Does it get Heat Wave? No, it doesn't, but it gets Flamethrower. It gets Thunderbolt. Yeah, Bolt Beam, Flamethrower, and a move that is unresisted. It's literally everything. I just think that this guy could actually go crazy. And yeah, um, I don't know really what to think about this guy until we get like Restricteds. However, when we do get Restricteds, its ability is going to be insane. So, if this thing terrastalizes, it instantly turns off all weather and terrain once per battle. So this is like a soft counter to Kyogre, uh, to Groudon, to whatever. And the reason that that's kind of huge is because uh, basically like rain teams, they tend to like really, really rely on, how do I say it? Water spout from Kyogre is really strong, right? But it's not as strong as you think it is because once that rain is gone, it's not one-shotting things. You know, Groudon, once its sun is gone, it's not taking water moves like it's nothing because that, that sun basically makes it so it's a neutral hit. Uh, the terrain Pokemon, I don't think that's going to matter as much because we didn't get the Tapus in this DLC, but turning off Rillaboom's um, grassy terrain means that you can instantly block a grassy glide from being priority protecting like a partner pokemon so i don't know what pokemon would want to go next to this dude but it'll probably be you know <laughs> it'll probably do well uh, not really with kyogre now that i think about it because kyogre like you're gonna ruin yourself what restricteds would you use with this i don't know maybe zashian zashian wouldn't be bad zashian wouldn't be bad at all uh because it hates facing uh you know the other restricteds with weather uh, beyond that, it's pretty interesting. Calyrex Shadow Rider. We finally have like a, a normal type that can actually like just deal with Calyrex Shadow Rider. It kind of walls it out a little bit. Maybe like if you're in like an Assault Vest set, because you, you don't have to worry about um, Astral Barrage, the most broken move in the game. Um, I guess you would need to run. Does it get Snarl? That'd be really good. No, but it gets Dark Pulse. So actually, yeah, maybe like Assault Vest, Dark Pulse, Terra Star Storm. Um... And then just like coverage options for everything. Thunderbolt, Ice Beam. Actually, yeah, no, that goes, that goes crazy. It's almost like a like a giant Porygon too. Yeah, actually, wait, no, hold on. Let me let me see something, hold on. Porygon 2, 105, 105. Hold up, hold up. 95, 85, 110, 90. Hold on, guys, this might just be a giant Porygon 2 doesn't have to run Evil Light, but you want to run Evil Light because this thing gets bulkier than it. I don't know. <laughs> it's just it's just funny to me. But yeah, uh, those are my initial thoughts on all the 
new Pokemon in this first DLC. I don't know. A lot of them are just super strong. I just wanted to give some ideas as to how you could run them. Uh, I think the strongest is definitely going to be probably Raging Bolt. And then like the runner up to that might be like Iron Crown. And then and then our Chaldon. But yeah. And then obviously like Terrapagos is probably going to be the strongest of all of them. But that's only going to be legal in a couple of months. So yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.